I find the Irish accent very soothing. It's quite different from the standard American English accent, where the resonance is in the middle of the mouth. Right there. There's definitely different things about the Irish resonance. He's right. The Irish resonance is forward, and you don't want to keep your lips open too wide. No, keep them closed like a barrel of a gun. Although I don't condone violence. Now apply these resonance tips with vowel substitutions. Let's start with the standard American short A. It gives you a sound like man, trap, castle. With the Irish accent, it sounds much more soothing. Man, trap, castle. The ah sound goes to the ah sound. The cat crawled across the lawn. The cat crawled across the lawn. The OI goes to the I. For instance, oil, choice, toil goes to oil, choice, tile. Hear that? What's cool is the reverse is true as well. The I sound goes to the OI sound. It's subtle. Don't make it a clear and distinct OI, kind of somewhere in between the I and the OI. For instance, righteous becomes righteous. The righteous boy fights with tight muscles. The righteous boy fights with tight muscles. Try a couple different versions. See what works for you. Lean more towards the O sound sometimes, and then lean towards the air sound sometimes. For instance, I climbed the tower and gave her a flower. I climbed up the tower and gave her a flower. Remember, in standard American English, we have vowel diphthongs. There's two different versions, the short version and the long version. For instance, A is the long version, A is the short version. When you do the long versions of the vowels, try altering the pitch. You start high and end low and draw it out a little bit with that melodic, soft tone that the Irish are wonderful at. For instance, let's do the O. Draw the O out longer. It gets an O sound. Older. Yeah, like oldest is gonna become oldest. The O sound is gonna get a long drawn out O sound. Juicy and spoon become juicy spoon. The Josie Spoon. Yeah, and then the E sound lilts downward to the A sound. Agree and lean become I agree to lean against the beam. Sometimes you could really lean into the downward lilt and make it into a full A sound, like gate. Try it with words like T, receive, beat. T, receive, bait. The Irish R's are fun. In standard American English, when we say our R's, it resonates in the back of the throat. But with the Irish accent, it comes forward and it's broad, softer. The horrible dog started to bark in the garden. That horrible dog started to bark in the garden. All these pitch changes in the diphthongs are not easy. They're pretty extreme. When you're learning, Go all out, fully commit. And when you take it to the stage, maybe you pepper them into your scenes every now and then. Next, the short E gets converted to a short I when it's before an M, an N, or a V. For instance, the tender temptress was never a devil. The tender temptress was never a devil. Go ahead and drop that G from the ING endings. Unless you're playing someone who's upper class and sophisticated, in that case, leave the G in. For instance, words like playing, eating, sleeping. Go ahead and switch to every day I was playing and eating and singing. If you want to lay it on thick, this is not common. You can change the T sound and the D sound to the voiceless or the voiced TH sound. For example, better, butter. 
Everything's better with better. I often find when I incorporate that tactic into my characters, I tend to slip up and I become tongue-tied. So don't let that happen to you, but definitely give it a whirl out there on stage. See what happens. It could be fun. Thanks for joining us. I hope you got some tips that'll move you in the right direction to learning the Irish accent. If you like what you're seeing, subscribe to the channel, like the video, make comments. See you next time. I love you.